Hello everyone, and welcome back to the world of Thetis. Last time, we had just finished talking to Flymouth, and we've discovered that she's actually alive, and we accidentally kind of summoned her back into existence. I don't know how bad that is. I mean, she did help us previously in the, in the past, but, you know... Uh, I, I don't know. She doesn't... Maybe I'm misguided in thinking that she's, like, an evil villain or something. Like, she she hasn't really done anything yet that I know of that's terrible, other than the fact that she uses young women to fuel her youth. That's not good, but, I mean, I feel like magic and these types of sacrifices happen all over. <laughs> all over Thetis, so... Um, anyway, maybe... Maybe... <laughs> I'm not sure if I should, like hate her or not and she did save us previously from the dark spawn earlier in the playthrough but that was like over a year ago but um okay so what are we going to do now so we are going to go along with the the long way home the main plot return the amulet to keep her marathari in the dalish camp so we have to go back to her and let her know everything that just happened and um we're going to pick up some of this gold that we have laying around we can't just leave that um, and we're going to go back to the camp. All right, let's get back. Maserana's child, your debt is paid in full. It isn't too late to change your mind, Dalen. Darath Shiral, Keeper. Huh. I'm ready. Let's depart. Okay. I'm glad to have her. Glad to have her on the team. I think, right? She was a little suspicious when I first met her. I don't know what she was hiding when we first walked up onto her, but hopefully it's nothing too evil. But um I didn't seem to really have a choice in this com in this uh companion here. Elganon. Is this Is this really where the elves live? <laughs> <laughs> Not the prettiest part of Kirkwall, but it doesn't have a view of the giant chains. Take what you can get. I didn't think it would be so... so... I've never seen so many people in one place before. It seems so lonely. That's interesting. That's an interesting quote. I've never seen so many people in one place. It seems so lonely. It's so contradictory how that is actually sort of true, though. Um, you already know me. You'll make other friends soon enough. Guy. Thank you. Thank you for everything. For all your help. Will you come visit me? Not now, of course. But maybe later. I could use a friend. Sure. I'd like that, Meryl. Thank you. Oh, I'm thanking you too much, aren't I? I mean wow. It, <laughs> She's a little awkward, but that's okay. Um, okay, so now we get to choose. Well, I really like having um, Bethany, but I don't want to have two mages, though. So let's keep Varric. He's fun. And, or, yeah, let's keep Varric. And she's a warrior, which is really cool. But I guess let's try Meryl out for a bit. I mean, if she's new to the team, we should at least try her out for a little bit, right? Okay, so we completed that quest a long way home. So going back to the active ones. Oh, these are just rumors. Uh, Wayward Sun um, and Black Powder Promise. Now, I just want to let everyone know, and some of the viewers as well, that I will not be going on to the Deep Roads Expedition until I find a certain few characters that I was told are very easy to miss. So one of my dedicated viewers, Rose, had mentioned to me in the previous episode that I really need to go to the, um, the inn at night in order to encounter... Um, a particular character that's very easy to miss. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, so um, just so that I can make sure that I s meet this character and enable to have this person join the team. And there was also this other character that I need to s um, find by looking at my books, like the, the codex entry, not the codex entry, but like the journal that is in the home. 
Um, so I'm actually going to go back to the home and speak to Meryl at her home in Low, Low Town's alienage. Um, let's do that because why not? Companions, right? Companions are nice people. Um, and uh, I'm all happy about uh, speaking Good to, to see Meryl. You again, my dear. So my let's do he might that. Have a job for you. Thought you should know. Ariani? I'll have to speak with him soon. Please, Sir Thrice. Before I speak to her, I'm going to go do what I mentioned really that I was going to do. I'm going to go really? this way. Sunshine. Oh, the city elves. Okay, so um, Arlathan Part 1, we've already read. Deep Mushrooms and Silverite. It's the city elves that I have not read. Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about the elves that live in the city and how they are different from their Dalish relatives. Okay, so when the holy exalted march of the Dales resulted in the dissolution of the Elven Kingdom, leaving a great many elves homeless once again, the divine Renata I declared that all lands loyal to the Chantry must give the elves refuge within their own walls. Considering the atrocities committed by the elves at Red Crossing, this was a great testament to the Chantry's charity. There was one condition, however, the elves were to lay aside their pagan gods and live under the rule of the Chantry. Wow. Okay. Um, okay, so they can no longer worship their own gods. They must... <laughs> that's amazing. So I'm sure that must have been devastating for them. Some of the elves refused our goodwill. They band together to form the wandering Dalish elves, keeping their old elven ways and their hatred of humans alive. To this day, Dalish elves still terrorize those of us who stray too close to their camps. Most of the elves, however, saw that it was the wisest that it was wisest to live under the protection of humans. Oh wow. And so we took the elves into our cities and tried to integrate them. We invited them into our homes and gave them jobs as servants and farmhands. Oh, how generous. Are you serious? They just want slaves, assholes. Here in Dinnerum, the elves even have their own quarter, governed by an elven keeper. This is not... This is not... The only reason they have their own quarter is to segregate. It's segregation is what it is. So most have proven to be productive members of society. Still, a small segment of the elven communities remains dissatisfied. These troublemakers and malcontents roam the streets causing mayhem, rebelling against authority and making a general nuisance of themselves. From Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Patrine. So she's obviously slanted toward the human side. But, um, y you know, if I was an elf, I would probably be Dalish. I, I don't know why I would want to live under the rule of a different race and just be like delegated to be a servant or farmhand and then segregated in the city. That doesn't sound like a Dwarf, life I would like. In case you missed that detail. Um Dwarves aren't But let's level up Meryl because she has an ability and I I just want to take on whatever she has the most advanced at the moment. Um so let's go with entropy. These are all sort of tied in a sense. So I'll just go with entropy because it sounds cool. Horror Terrifying visions. I like it. Oh, I have another one. And misdirection hex. Let's confirm that. And then tactics for her. She would be um, her behavior. What is her behavior? Well, she's a mage. Um, I guess aggressive would be the debilitator. I think debilitator looked good. I just like what I what I'm seeing here. So let's do that. Um, be immune to magic, you know. Okay. No, no, no. I meant there are at least 30 people in this town who'd murder my family over trade deals. Who has time to worry about apostates with a merchant's guild breathing down your neck? In that case, I see. <laughs> okay. All right. So we got to keep going towards our home because I need to speak to Meryl. Oh, which is this way. Okay, let's leave this area. And go home. I can see that I have a new letter here. So let's go to Gamlin's house. So someone dropped off a message for you. It's on the desk. Not that he didn't do okay. his best to try and read. I have 
the bone pit and loose ends. So it says the bone pit. Hawk, I've got a lead for you. A merchant I acquire goods for told me that workers have gone missing from his bone pit mining operation. He mentioned that the missing miners were Ferelden, which made me think of you. If you're interested, go hit up Hubert in the High Town Market. A thin roll. Okay, so this is the the one that eventually uh, initially, um, kind of, I think I think this is the one I, that I initially worked for. Uh, yeah, it is because letter from a thin roll. Yep. Um, so he's missing miners. Interesting, and then loose ends. Hawk. I know we didn't part on the best terms. You were right. I was trying to squeeze more work out of you than was justified. You're more, you've more than paid your way into the city. It's been tight since you left, though. If you're looking for more work, for real coin in your pocket, come see me in Hightown any time before sunset. So that's the bone pit and loose nice. ends. Now, I can actually accept them. I haven't accepted them, because you can see accept here. So those just say read, but these say accept. But before I, I accept those... I thought there might be something dangerous in there. I want to speak to Damn. Meryl, if possible. Um, also, and someone told me that these here are... Um, some of these are DLCs, and some of them are just like armor that I can just equip right now. The problem is, is I can't tell what is DLC... And what is not, and what is just armor that I can pick up right now. So I'm gonna click on special deliveries. Okay, so this is clearly just gear here. Tomes allow Hawk to instantly learn abilities. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Whoa. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Oh, wow. Um. Uh, let's take all of that, I guess. Oh, my inventory's full. All right, so let's see. Um, I suppose I should probably try to have a better sword. Um, oh, this long sword is a lot better than the one I currently have. So let's go ahead and um, it's actually a two star. Oh, and this one's even better. So I've got an onyx long sword. It does better damage and plus 31 attack. So let's go ahead and equip that long sword. That's a better one. We'll get rid of those. If it's one star, I guess I can move it to junk, right? I'm, that's my assumption. The smuggled blade, don't need that. And then landsman's cudgel, probably don't need that. Um, I'm more than happy to give up, you know, one star pieces of equipment that I don't really need. Okay, look at all of this. So dragon bone armor, this is clearly better than, oh wow, it's like bloody. Oh, no, it's not bloody. It just has this logo on it. Um, this is the dragon blood armor. So I guess I'll put on the dragon blood hel- Ooh, wow. Okay. Dragon blood gauntlets. Blood dragon greaves. I mean, why not? I guess, right? Why not have the best of the best? Um willpower so that's not going to be good for me but this will be good the ring of the magisters no good for me but well what do you think guys here's my new armor i look pretty intimidating um i've got eyes that are you know red and glaring um <laughs> but hey better armor is better armor so i'll take it um i do have to get rid of a lot of junk though i need to sell my stuff at some point um Okay, but the reason I am here is because I thought I was going to be able to talk to a very special person that is not here. A little disappointed. Um, but we'll take who I had had before. Okay, um, the next thing that I need to do is I need to go to Low Town, specifically during the night, I believe, um, because there is a there is a place I need to go to at night. The prop, the hanged man accessed by low town. So I believe that's where I need to go, but I'm going to go there at night. Always calling and getting rid of idiots, especially thugs who target the streets just because it's dark. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm going to look at the map. And here's the Hanged Man. So let's go there. I believe that's an inn, if I'm correct. Okay, so I think that this is an inn. The Hanged Man. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. So here I am in the Hanged Man at night. All right, so let's just take a seat here and speak to Varric. You've been drinking? No. All right. So, here's the thing. We need to find a way into the deep roads. Bartrand can lead us to the right place once we're down there, but we need a good entrance. Any entrance would do, wouldn't it? Unless a dragon's sitting in it, I suppose. We need an entrance that's close to our destination, but isn't already plundered or filled with darkspawn. Fortunately, I've received some new information. There's a Grey Warden in the city. If anyone knows how to get down there, it'll be him. Why would a Grey Warden know that? The Wardens don't just fight Darkspawn. They forge into the deep roads all the time. And if he doesn't know, he might be able to point us to those who do. Are there any other options? <sighs> None at the moment. Bartrand had an entrance lined up, but it was a bust. I'll keep looking. But if we don't find something, we'll have a fancy expedition with nowhere to go. <laughs> All right. We don't want trouble with the Grey Wardens, do we? Uh, let's look at our options first. I'd rather not fight a Warden unless we have to. Supposedly, this Grey Warden came in with some other Ferelden refugees not long ago. A Lowtown woman named Loreen has been helping the Ferelden's. We talk to her. Maybe we learn where he is. I'll keep after my contacts, see if I can drum up any other work. Oh, okay. Um, so, I got friendship with him. The Grey Warden's Codex entry. Um, we've got... Um, finish tasks in Kirkwall while Bertrand makes preparations for the expedition. So I need to bring the 50 sovereigns to Bertrand to become a partner in his expedition. Also, according to Varric, the expedition needs a way into the Deep Roads before it can go anywhere. And so, Tranquility, seek out a Grey Warden for help in the Deep Roads expedition. Varric heard that one is working as a healer somewhere. A shopkeeper named Lorene in Lowtown may have more information. Okay. Um, I still want to speak to Meryl at her... Oh, at her home in the Lowtown's alienage. I got confused. I was thinking of it as my home. So, I need to go to her home in the alienage. Okay, so Codex updated, and the Codex entry is of the Grey Wardens. Now, obviously, we played as a Grey Warden for an entire game. So um, let's go ahead and read what it says about Grey Wardens in this game. But before I do that, I need a cup of coffee. One second, I'll be right back. Okay, I have my coffee. Doing much better. All right, so let's see the Grey Wardens. The first blight had already raged for 90 years. The world was in chaos. A god had risen, twisted and corrupted. The remaining gods of Tevinter were silent, withdrawn. What writing we have recovered from those times is filled with despair. For everyone believed, from the greatest archons to the lowliest slaves, that the world was coming to an end. At Weishaupt Fortress, in the desolate Enderfells, a meeting transpired. And remember, we were in the Anderfells Mountains, actually. When we went up to the top of that mountain, that is one of the Anderfells Mountains. And I remember reading the lore about the Anderfells. So, good to see them in a place that we're familiar with. But this was before any blights probably had destroyed the mountains. So, this the, the mountains might be more lush at this moment in time. Because this is still during the first blight. This is at Weishaupt Fortress in the desolate Anderfels. A meeting transpired. Soldiers of the Imperium, seasoned veterans who had known nothing their entire lifetimes except hopeless war, came together. When they left Weishaupt, they, were they had renounced their oaths to the Imperium. They were soldiers no longer. 
they were the Grey Wardens. So that's the founding of the Grey Wardens. The Wardens began an aggressive campaign against the Blight, striking back against the Darkspawn, reclaiming lands given up for lost. The Blight was far from over, but their victories brought notice, and soon they received aid from every nation in Thetis. They grew in number as well as reputation. Finally, in the year 992 of the Tevinter Imperium, upon the Silent Plains, they met the Archdemon Dumat in battle. A third of all the armies of northern Thetis were lost to the fighting, but Dumat fell and the Darkspawn fled back underground. Even that was not the end. The Imperium once revered seven gods, Dumat, Zazakel, Toth, Androhal, Razakel, Lusacane, and Erthemiel. Four have risen as Archdemons. The Grey Wardens have kept watch through the ages, well aware that peace is fleeting, and that their war continues until the last of the dragon gods is gone. From Ferelden, Folklore and History by Sister Patrine Chantry Scholar. Um, so there you go, the founding of the Grey Wardens, um, the, the, the old gods that eventually became dragons, or the arch, arch demons, I suppose, um, the first blight, all of that very good information about them. So there we go. So there is that. Um, I suppose we can leave this location now and go to the Elven Aliage. We d I do want to check up on what he had mentioned. Um, he had mentioned somebody that he would like us to meet. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. Um, so we're at the Hanged Man. I want to go to um, Lowtown again. And hopefully go to the Alienage. If I can find the alienage. Okay, so we need to go to the elven alienage um, for the welcome home quest, which if we open our map, that should be right there. So I need to go to my right and go up this direction. That would be where I'm supposed to go. Whoa, someone attacking me right now? I didn't expect that. Wow. Get back more. They call me good. All right, good job. With us. Is everybody? What makes the gang so angry at night? Someone should do something about them. Yeah, seriously. Someone should do something. <laughs> I guess that would be us that has to do something about them. Um, so let's go this way. And I believe the Elven alien is... Whoa! It's so hard to control to go here follow the little sign Meryl's home okay this is Meryl's home all right Meryl um, let's talk about Meryl mana and the use of magic that's a big book um, okay here we go I didn't think you'd come I'll find something relatively clean for you to sit on Can I get you something to eat or drink? I have water. Yeah, okay, sure. I came here to see you, Meryl. You don't have to fuss over me. You're so kind. My first guest and I'm already a terrible host. I wanted to thank you for bringing me here, but I'm making a mess of it. You're so sweet, Meryl. 
I'm not really. If good wishes were enough, everyone in Thedas would be happy. I haven't exactly had many friends. Not even among my own clan. This is... tricky. What made you unpopular with the Dalish? Being first to the Keeper, I was always a bit secluded. I studied magic and history while the others were learning the Via Tanadal. It's good that I left. I'd have made a terrible Keeper. I was never that good with people. It won't take long before you're the most popular girl in the alienage. Mythol, I hope not. I'd managed to say something stupid in front of everyone and embarrass myself. Thank you for coming to visit me, Hawk. It means a lot to me. Oh, okay. That was... Wasn't much to that, just a kind of a just checking in. But more, more that would happen. So what is mana and the use of magic? Okay. Mana is that which defines a mage. It is potential that dwells within a person, but, but does not always manifest itself. All men are connected to the Fade. We go there to dream. But only those with this potential may draw upon its power. Mana is, then, a measurement of one's ability to draw power from the Fade, and it is this power that is expended in magic. Wow. Okay, so magic is really your ability to draw from the Fade. As in all other things, it has limits. Just as a man has the strength to lift only so much weight and no more, a mage cannot work more magic at one time than his mana allows. If he wishes to work magic that would be beyond his strength, a mage must bolster his mana with lyrium. Without lyrium, it is possible for the reckless to expend their own life force in the working of magic, and occasionally ambitious apprentices injure or even kill themselves by overexertion. From the letters of First Enchanter Wincellus. Wow, so that makes a lot of sense. Like, that totally, totally makes sense. Totally get it. Um, I'm just kind of n poking my nose around. Is that where she poops? This is definitely where she poops. <laughs> it's a little weird to see that. But, um, what is this? A book? The Maker's First Children? Well, this looks like a nice little bedtime story. The Maker's first creations were the spirits, glorious beings that populated the many spires of the Golden City, and the Chant of Light says that they revered the Maker with unquestioning devotion. The Maker, however, was dissatisfied. Although the spirits were like him in that they could manipulate the ether and create from it, they did not do so. They had no urge to create, and even when instructed to do so, possessed no imagination to give their creations ingenuity or life. The Maker realized his own folly. He had created the spirits to resemble him in all but the one and most important way. They did not have a spark of the divine within him. He expelled all the spirits out of the Golden City and into the Fade, and proceeded to his new creation, life. The Maker created the world and the living beings upon it, separated from the Fade by the Veil. His new children would be unable to shape the world around them, and thus would need to struggle to survive. In return for their struggle, the Maker gave them the spark of the Divine, a soul and he watched with pleasure as his creations flourished and showed all the ingenuity that he had hoped for. The spirits grew jealous and the living of the living and coaxed them into the Fade when they slept. The spirits wished to know more of life, hoping to find a way to regain the Maker's favor. Through the eyes of the living, they experienced new concepts, love, fear, pain, and hope. The spirits reshaped the Fade to resemble the lives and concepts that they saw, each spirit desperately trying to bring the most dreamers to their own realm so they could vicariously possess a spark of the divine through them. As the spirits grew in power, however, some of them became contemptuous of the living. These were the spirits that saw the darkest parts of their dreamers. 
Their lands were places of torment and horror, and they knew that the living were strongly drawn to places that mirrored those dark parts of themselves. These spirits questioned the Maker's wisdom and proclaimed the living inferior. They learned from the darkness they saw and became the first demons. Rage, hunger, sloth, desire, pride. These are the dark parts of the soul that give demons their power, the hooks they use to claw their way into the world of the living. It was demons that whispered into the minds of men, convincing them to turn from the Maker and worship false gods. They seek to possess all life as their due, forging kingdoms of nightmare in the fade in the hopes of one day storming the walls of heaven itself. The Maker despaired once again, for he had given the power of creation to his new children, and in return they had created sin. From the Maker's First Children by Bador, Senior Enchanter of Ostwick, 812 Blessed. Now that was an amazingly beautiful st bit of storytelling. It's so interesting to realize that there were spirits without souls, and those were the first creation. And then the second creation was um, humans, which are very limited, but have souls. And they have ingenuity, and they can create. And in their creating, they created all of the evil that they have um, done. And also the spirits became jealous of the humans, the second creation, creator, creation basically. And um, they became demons in sp uh, to try and claw their way into our world. And uh, that is exactly what has happened. Ah, and look at this. We have a lore party today, guys. We're going to be reading one more book, Arleth in Part 2, and then we'll continue on with our journey. So we already know a bit about Arlethan, uh, but in Part 2, I suppose we'll continue the story. You asked what happened to Arlethan. Sadly, we do not know. Even those of us who keep the ancient lore have no record of what truly happened. What we have are accounts of the days before the fall, and a fable of the whims of the gods. The human world was changing even as the elves slept. Clans and tribes gave way to a powerful empire called Tevinter, which, and for what reason we do not know, moved to conquer Elvenon. When they breached the great city of Arlethan, our people, fearful of disease and loss of immortality, chose to flee rather than fight. With magic, demons, and even dragons at their behest, the Tevinter Imperium marched easily through Arlethan, destroying homes and galleries and amphitheaters that had stood for ages. Our people were corralled as slaves, and human contact quickened their veins until every captured elf turned mortal. The elves called to their ancient gods, but there was no answer. As to why the gods didn't answer, our people left only a legend. They say that Finn Harrel, the Dreadwolf, and Lord of Tricksters, approached the ancient gods of good and evil and proposed a truce. The gods of good would remove themselves to heaven, and the lords of evil would exile themselves to the abyss, neither group ever again to enter the other's lands. But the gods did not know that Finn Harrel had planned to betray them, and by the time they realized the Dreadwolf's treachery, they were sealed in their respective realms, never again to interact with the mortal world. It is a fable, to be sure, but those elves who travel the beyond claim that Finn Harrel still roams the worlds of dreams, keeping watch over the gods lest they escape from their prisons. Whatever the case, Arlethan had fallen to the very humans our people had once considered mere pests. It is said that the Deventer Magisters used their great destructive power to force the very ground to swallow Arlethan whole, destroying eons of collected knowledge, culture, and art. The whole of elven lore left only to memory. The Fall of Arlethan, as told by Gisharel, keeper of the Ralifarin clan of the Dalish Elves. Very good, very good. So apparently it fell to the humans uh, in time, which is unfortunate. But uh, we did complete this quest here um, for her. So um, I suppose what we're going to do is uh, go to um, Tranquility, I suppose. Or should we do something else? Well, there are rumors. I wonder if any of these rumors are like sound like they would be fun. 
Varric sources say that there has been a number of Templar raids held in Lowtown's elven alien. He can't verify why, however, or who's been giving the orders. Okay, well, let's see if we can find out. I mean, we're in the alienage. Why not? Um, there's High Town. There's Viscount Keep. Um, it would be in Low Town, so. Okay, so we have Ari Ariani here. I don't know which one that would be for. Um, Act of Mercy. Oh, this is Wayward Son. So uh, this is the one I'm supposed to be doing according to this. All right, so let's see if she knows Please, who's Sir Thras, greetings. causing. Go to the circle willingly, but it's the only place. <laughs> Madam, we'll do our best to find your son, but I cannot guarantee his safety if he continues to resist Templar jurisdiction. He's just a boy. He's an apostate. Oh no. I am sorry for your loss, mistress. But I can offer your son mercy only if he turns himself in. I'm trying to find him, but... The Templars cannot tolerate apostates. Can we help this woman? This could be mother. <gasps> I'm guessing that Templar wasn't here to offer your son his good wishes. I am Ariani. My boy, Fainriel. He's all I have. All my family. When I learned he had magic, I could not bear to send him to the Circle. But his connection to the Fade, it gives him nightmares. Dreams of demons speaking in his mind. Mm. I would rather lose him to the Circle than to himself. I see. Did your son run away? He learned I had contacted Sir Thrask. He felt I betrayed his trust. He thinks he can live free of the Circle. But I am afraid without proper training, he'll kill himself. Those look like Dalish tattoos. Why do you live in the city? I was born to the Dalish, but came to Kirkwall for a time and dallied with a human merchant, Vincento. When I found I was with child, neither Vincento nor my tribe wished the burden of an elf-blooded human infant. I raised Fainriel myself, here in the alienage. Oof, I see. Tell me the whole story. I learned years ago that my son likely had magical talent, but we could not bear the thought of him locked in the gallows. So we hid. When the nightmares began, Fainriel still refused to contact the Circle. But I... I truly think they are the only people who might save his life. I promise you will see your son again. Then you have given me the greatest blessing of maker or man. I don't know where Fainriel is gone, but there are two places you might start your search. Sir Thrask has been looking for him. If you speak to him in the gallows, he'll be able to tell you what ground he's already covered. And Fainriel's father, Vincento, recently returned from Antiva. He's a merchant in the Low Town Bazaar. Fainriel might have sought him out. Tell me about this Templar. I believe he's a good man. He doesn't hate mages but sees what it took me too long to realize. Even the best-intentioned mages are at the mercy of their sleeping minds. There are other Templars who are much less sympathetic. I will not leave you fearful for a moment longer than necessary. Magic can be a fearful gift. Your son deserves the best aid learning how to manage it. Thank you. It has been a lonely time hiding. It's almost a relief to finally confront this openly. Not yet. Okay, I see. The oversees the docks. Says he doesn't want any more knife ears than necessary. Bloody shams. Gotcha. Okay, so the update to that quest is, um... Well, where is it? Um... <laughs> which one is the... Is the one that I'm supposed to be doing here? Oh, okay, Wayward Son. It's now in the main plot section. It was in Rumors. Now it's over here. So I need to speak to Thrask in the Gallows Courtyard or Vincento in the Lowtown Market during the day about the boy Fainrail. Okay. Um, all right, well, let's do that then. And 
we will try to help her get her son back. Um, he is one of the uh, I've never met a dwarf apostates, before. so... That's because you've spent too much time frolicking in the woods, Daisy. Dwarves don't frolic. Dalish don't really frolic, either. Not in the woods, anyway. You have sanctioned frolicking areas? No, just not in the woods. The trees get jealous. But you do frolic. Of course we do. We wouldn't be elves otherwise. <laughs> okay. I keep getting lost here. The last time I went to the market by myself, it took me four hours to find my way home. Wow. Despite the name, Low Town's not so bad. Just more likely to be destroyed by tidal waves than High Town. Okay. I just can't get used to all the noise in Low Town. And the smell. What a come down for Mother to be here. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Let's continue into this area here. This here is the, uh, what is this? The Low Town Bazaar. What is a bazaar? Is, I thought a bazaar was like a, a party or a gathering of some kind. I suppose we can try here. Will everyone please just step back? My mother's in labor. The baby's come early. Can anyone help her? I'll send word to the healer, but... My son's hurt bad. Cart overturned on him in the blasted bone pit. Everyone in your turn. I promise we have donations coming in. There will be food and medicine for all of you. If you're seeking aid, leave your name with my girl. We serve everyone here. No one came from Ferelden without trouble. But I can't give priority to anyone who's already found work and lodging. Okay. I hear you know where I can find a Ferelden Grey Warden. Only Ferelden Grey Warden I've heard of is sitting on the throne. We're out of the Blight's path now. Why would you need a warden? The healer was one of them once, wasn't he? A warden? Well, he's not now. And busy enough without answering fool questions about it. Yeah, seriously, why so defensive? Who are you protecting? You see what our people face in Kirkwall. They have no jobs, no homes. Most can barely buy bread. This healer, he serves them without thought for coin. He's closed their wounds, delivered their children. He sounds very busy. We won't be any trouble, we promise. He's a good man. I won't lose him to the blighted Templars. You mean he's a mage? Would wow. I stick my neck out for some purveyor of hensbane and leeches? We would never turn someone over to the Templars, mistress. Never. He doesn't want to be locked in the gallows just for using the gifts the Maker gave him. Your healer is in no danger from me. No maid should suffer for an accident of birth. I suppose it isn't my secret to keep. Anders has certainly been free enough with his services. Refugees in Darktown know to find the healer, look for the lit lantern. If you have need enough, Anders will be within. Please, my mother, don't let her lose another... Okay, so go to this clinic in Darktown where the Grey Warden is healing the poor. Wow. Um, speak to Thrask in the Gallows Courtyard or Vincento. Oh yes, we, we already have Baby. that. Um, so it seems like people would know about this healer. I mean, you would think people would know about the healer. Flower? We've been out for a week. The children are eating sawdust. Okay, so let's head out here. Um... Hey, we heard you in there asking about the healer. We know what happens to mages in this town. And it ain't gonna happen to him. Look, we're Vereldans just trying to keep out of the Templar's sight, same as you. Vereldan? But you, your clothes. I figured you for a Kirkwaller, sorry. Make her bless the rule of our King Alistair. <laughs> yeah, King Alistair. Okay, well, they're very nice. It, I can see... I noticed that every single time I choose to use one of the companions options that are on the left, it tends to go well for me. I'm sure it will not be every time that that happens, but it seems to be 
quite handy so far. Greetings, Sarah. You look like a man who'd be interested in the finest Antivan steel to grace his hand. I bring only the best northern merchandise to the free marches. Actually, I'm more interested in your son. Son? I have never had that privilege, Sarah. My poor wife, she's back in Antiva and cannot see me often with my travels. Please, Sarah. I know you must fear for Fainriel, but we mean him no harm. Hmm. <laughs> Hard to tell in this city who means who harm, no? Perhaps you can set his mind at ease. We are no Templars, Sarah. You'll find no better friend to a young scared mage. Maldición, you are a mage. I suppose you'd be kind then to a boy who resists being taken in by Templars? Absolutely. Of course. The boy is in over his head. So I send him to the only man I know who doesn't despise mages. A former Templar named Samson. Ah, do you know where he is? Does this Samson have a residence in Kirkwall? No. He is a wanted man. He stays out of sight during the day. At night, he stays near Darktown. That's the best place to find him. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so... Um... Samson is usually loitering in the lower reaches of Lowtown at night. Okay, so there you go. That's our uh, our key there. Um, oh, I can finally sell all my junk. Oh my god, that's nice. Um, I love selling my junk. All right, so let's go back. I wonder... Change your mind? Interested in my wares? I'll take a look. Lucky you came early, my friend. I wonder if he has a bag, because I noticed that there's like these extra slots. So I'm wondering if he would have a bag that I could use. Um, oh, he doesn't seem to have any bags for sale. Or something to increase my uh, capacity, because my inventory space is kind of low. I, why do I have this on hold? I do not want this to be on hold. Um... Okay. Lady Elegant, who are you? My, my. If it isn't Hawk. Good to see you again, Elegant. Lady Elegant, if you don't mind. I'm a married woman now. Last time we met, you were still in Athenral's employ. Things have been going well since then? Could be better. Could be worse. I often feel the same way. You may recall I sometimes provided potions for Athenral. I'd be willing to extend you the same courtesy, if you like. All I ask is you inform me of any interesting reagents you find. In exchange, I'll approach my contacts on your behalf. And of course you'll need the appropriate recipes, such as this one. Free, for oh, old time's sake. Well, nice. Crafting recipe, elf fruit potion. Makes sense. I mean, that seems like something I would definitely need to have. Um, by the way, I... I don't know what these little hearts here at the bottom are, or even what any of the character record. Okay, this all makes sense. Tactics, map, but I don't know what the red heart and the yellow golden thing means. Apparently if I click minus, minus, does that do anything? Equals? Yeah, I don't know what these things are down here. I've seen them, but I have no clue what they are. Um, okay, maybe someone in the comments can let me know. Older po order potions. Um, so there's the elf root potion. Um, I don't even know how much money I have. How much money do I have? Oh, I have 46 sovereigns. My goodness. Um, so resource varieties discovered. I've discovered elf root, spindleweed, embryum, and ambrosia. I don't think I've... Oh, varieties. I have never discovered a spindleweed variety. Oh, okay, it says zero out of six. Okay, I gotcha. Um, I can get that. Um, I should have plenty of these, but uh, I can take a few more of those. Right now, I really want to complete um, this mission here. Speak to Samson about Finn Harrell. Samson is usually loitering, okay, at low town at night. So I need to exit here and uh 
Only younger. So I need to go to Low Town at night. Okay, so here I'm at Low Town at night, and I still need to. Oh gosh, more of these guys. <laughs> I love seeing all the, the fire, you know, raining down from above. There's so many of them. Wow. I love seeing... Jesus, they're both very right? good. Very good. Uh, more of these guys. I'll deal with this! <laughs> I love that I can just keep doing that over and over again. All right. Victory. Sharp little pinpricks. Directions to the Sharp's base. You've got a new base and you and you lot best keep the law away. Directions to the Lowtown sneak below. But don't come unless you've got good news, or you'll get an answer square but inside between the eyes. Ignacio Strand. Oh, okay. Sharp little pinpricks. Um, that's a side quest there. The Sharps aim to needle Lowtown to death, but their leader, Ignacio Strand, can't hide forever. Clear their hideout. Oh, goodness. I'm still trying to get to the Wayward Sun here. Um, so I need to go here. Samson? Uh, old Vincento said someone might come sniffing around. You're looking for the boy, right? Feign something. I'll tell you now, there's not much I can do for you. Did you meet the boy? Afraid so. Blighter was dead broke, though. Not a silver on him. I helped one mageling for free, and I'll never get paid again. You abandoned him? I pointed him to a ship captain I know, Rayner. Sometimes he'll take on runaways. Took another apostate last week. Girl, I sent him. Might have gone wrong, though. I heard rumors he took the both of them captive instead. Please tell me it's not too late to save him. Rumor has it Rayner had the pair of them locked inside a Keys warehouse, somewhere close to Dockside. You want to go looking? You might find the lad before he gets ransomed to the Templars. Or worse. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, he should be in a warehouse in the docks tonight. Okay, so... Um, at the docks, huh? This, this game is very, like, sort of spiraling. Um, yeah. So the game, like, kind of... <laughs> it... You know, it keeps leading you to another place in the city and another place and another place. Um, all right, we can take these guys. I've noticed the combat hasn't been too challenging, and I like that. I like that, you know, I have not yet been in danger at any moment yet. I haven't yet come across a time when I felt like I was about to die. Eastern Warehouse District.
got him. Not going to happen. Oh, I can't get in that way, but I can go around, right? Get a hold of her. Please help me, anyone. <sighs> get the hands. I heard they can't do no spells oh, no. without She's hands. Oh no, magic. Oh. You know nothing of magic. What the heck is that? It's an abom- Oh yeah, of course it's abomination. I know very well what those are. Got it. We are very awesome mages. Like, warriors? As far as warriors go, Thrask's letter. Oh, Olivia's letter to Thrask. Father, I know the sacrifices you've made to conceal my secret, but I am a child and no longer. I cannot burden you my whole life, lest my secret destroy us both. I must live my own life as a woman and as a mage. It is oddly freeing to write the word. Farewell, father. I hope one day you make peace between what you have been taught and what you have seen. All my love, Olivia. So she did, she uh, basically, I think, I'm not um, she kind of lost control of herself. The hideout location map. Two barrels of fish, Viscount's Keep, three barrels of rum, one male human mage, Danzig, Undercity. Okay, there's your hint right there. Um, I hope she didn't weaken. It looks like she Man weakened the veil. You. Because I think That's these enough. came from the fade, right? Is that what happened? That never would have happened if they hadn't backed that poor girl into a corner. Do you think we can find out who she was? I mean, I don't know. I I tried to figure out who she was, but Everybody ah! stay still and try not to make any loud noises. Okay, so there's that. Um, so if we look at the journal here, find Danzig the Slaver in Darktown. So now we need to go to Darktown. Um, I would continue with this quest here, but um, it's actually getting to be a pretty long episode, so I think I need to end it, unfortunately. I don't want to, but um, I think we're going to have to wait until the next episode to finish this quest. But um, yeah, thank you all for um, joining me in this adventure. It's been a lot of fun, and I will see you next time.